Thank you for watching this video from Kingsway Soft. Today, I will be introducing the Azure Service Bus Components for within the SSIS Productivity Pack product. The SSIS Productivity Pack is a collection of premium SSIS components, which enable greater developer productivity and increases the power of SSIS. Using our Azure Service Bus Components, we can facilitate integration with Azure Service Bus from within SSIS. As of this recording, the SSIS Productivity Pack offers three Azure Service Bus components, Azure Service Bus Connection Manager, Azure Service Bus Source, and Azure Service Bus Destination. The Connection Manager can be used to establish connections with Azure Service Bus. The Source components can be used to read or retrieve messages from Service Bus queues or topics to be used as the source data of your SSIS integration whereas the destination component can be used to send messages to an Azure Service Bus queue, topic, or event hub. Let's begin by clicking the Connection Manager area down below and adding a new connection. Select Azure Service Bus Type and press Add. The Namespace field lets you specify the URL of your Azure Service Bus endpoint. Next, you can specify the issuer name and key that will be used for authentication. If you have an Azure Service Bus connection string available in Azure Service Portal, you can click this button here to enter it. The component will extract the relevant parts of the connection string to populate the above fields in the Connection Manager. Note that the namespace field should typically follow this pattern, starting with the namespace followed by Service Bus .windows.net. If you do not have the service bus.windows.net suffix, the connection manager will automatically use that as the default, so the suffix is essentially optional. There are two transport types that you can use with your connection, AMQP or net messaging. The connectivity mode option sets the underlying wire level protocol used to communicate with service bus. There are four support field values options available, auto detect, HTTP, HTTPS, and TCP. We also have a timeout option in which you can specify the timeout in seconds to use when attempting to connect to the Azure Service Bus server. Before we hit OK, we should test the connection to make sure our information is correct and we can connect successfully. Please note that the connection manager that we just created is a package level connection manager. For SSIS 2012 or later, you can create project level connection managers if you right click the connection managers node within the solution explorer. Now let's drag the Azure Service Bus source component from the toolbox to the design surface. Let's select an Azure Service Bus connection manager. There are two types of entities available. When a topic option is selected, a topic may be selected from the list of available topics. We can then specify the messages to be retrieved from the subscription list. When we select the queue option, a list of available queues will be presented. Some queues have additional options, such as session ID, where you can specify your session ID. To view a list of session IDs, currently available in the selected queue, you can click the Session IDs button. You can also choose to process all messages within the specified queue and session. The Batch Size option allows us to specify how many messages we would want to retrieve each time. There are two different modes available for receiving messages. If the Peak option is selected, messages will be received from the queue without deleting them or modifying the queue in any way. If the Receive and Delete option is selected, messages will be retrieved and deleted from the queue. There is one additional option available for the source component, which can be used to specify if a listener mode is used. Note that it is only possible to select a listener mode if the Receive mode is Receive and Delete. After the source component has retrieved all available messages from the queue or topic, it can continue to listen for more messages for a period of time. There are three listener modes available. The fixed time mode 
allows the component to listen for incoming messages for a specified period of time. The wait until mode allows the component to listen for messages until a specified date and time. The wait until variable mode allows the component to listen for messages until a date and time specified in a variable. When new messages are detected in listener mode, they may not enter the SSIS pipeline immediately. This depends on the buffer settings of the SSIS task. Internally, any row that is directed to an output goes to an SSIS buffer, and SSIS will not actually direct the rows in that buffer until the buffer is considered full or the component has finished processing all of its data. While in listener mode, the component is considered to be processing data until the listener time has expired, which is when the full buffer is guaranteed to be completely processed. There is also a refresh component button where the component will retrieve the latest metadata and update each field to its most recent metadata. It will remove any custom fields that have been added in the columns page. Let's navigate the columns page to see the available attributes of the messages that will be retrieved. Here you will notice that by default, all the fields are selected. This may not be the best practice. You should only select the fields that you need to use in the downstream pipeline components. You can also add custom fields by selecting the Add button on the top. Custom fields can be used for values of any custom properties on the retrieved messages. For this demonstration, we are going to add a dummy data reader destination component for the purpose of showing you how the data flows from the source to destination components. We will now execute this data flow task. Next, we will demonstrate the Azure Service Bus destination component. For today's example, we will read from a local file that contains some contact information. To demonstrate this capability, we will use the data spawner, premium derived column, and XML merge components as part of our upstream data flow components to write to Azure Service Bus. These three components are also included within the SSIS productivity pack. I will quickly generate some sample test data using the data spawner for the following columns, first name, last name, email, and city. When writing to Azure Service Bus, you would typically use the XML Merge or JSON Merge components. For more information on XML Merge and JSON Merge, please refer to our video in the Help Manual. I will use a Premium Derived Column component to add a label and message ID. For more information on the Premium Derived Column component, please refer to the relevant Help Manual page on our website. Now let's drag the destination component from the toolbox to the design surface and connect to the upstream component. Let's select an Azure Service Bus Connection Manager. Next, we'll have to select an entity type. There are three options, Queue, Topic, and Event Hub. The Queue option will display a list of available queues to write to. The Topic option will display a list of available topics to write to. If the Event Hub option is selected, a list of event hubs will be presented from those available in Azure Service Bus. Events will be sent to this event hub. For our demo today, we will connect to a queue, specifically the destination queue. Messages written to Azure Service Bus can have a time to live property set, which is the number of seconds after which they will be removed from the queue. Set this value to zero if messages do not need to be expired automatically. Similar to the Azure Service Bus source component, the Azure Service Bus destination component also has a refresh component button. By clicking this button, the component will retrieve the latest metadata and update each field to its most recent metadata. It will remove any custom fields that have been added on the columns page. Let's head to the columns page now, where we can map the columns from upstream components to destination attributes. As mentioned before, you can also add custom fields by selecting the Add button. Custom fields can be used for values of any custom properties on their written messages. The last page is the error handling page, where there are three error handling mechanisms to choose from. 
The default option is fail an error, where the entire data flow task will fail as soon as an error occurs. There is also the redirect rows to error output, where the error output will contain the failed records with extra columns, error code, error column, and error message. There is also a third option, which is to ignore any errors that may have occurred. Let's click OK to finish configuring the destination component. We can now execute this data flow task. This concludes a demonstration of our Azure Service Bus components within our SSIS Productivity Pack. There are many other components in the SSIS Productivity Pack that enable developers to accomplish more in SSIS in a much more productive fashion. Azure Service Bus is just one of the messaging queue technologies that are supported. The Productivity Pack comes with a few other messaging queue support, including MSMQ, IBM MQ, RabbitMQ, and etc. Please feel free to take a look at our other videos available for viewing on our website or YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video. For any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us.